Hello, everybody. A very, very warm welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. So here you'll see Central Italy. So it's split into six series. We're here on series two on the Appalachians of Toscana. And this is a mammoth section here. Nine whole parts here. So parts one, two, and three. That's Chianti, Chianti Classico, Brunello de Montalcino are available as free videos here. Parts four through to nine are only available on my e-learning portal. That's over at winewithjimmy.com. Okie dokie, let's start looking at the world of Chianti DOCG and its subzones of importance for the level four diploma. So first of all, let's start to look at Chianti DOCG. All Chianti is DOCG level. That's the first thing we should mention. And modern day Chianti DOCG is a very large area that covers very much most of central Tuscany. Now, it actually surrounds the smaller Chianti Classico district, the historical area, the Storico. Uh, and it's really fascinating because we often, of course, in Europe, name places, wines after places. Chianti Classico is named after Chianti, the villages that we have uh, in this dark pink area. And then Chianti DOCG is an expansion area. And it's really, really strange, actually, because it's named after Chianti. But in fact, most Chianti produced in this larger area that we see here, shaded in lighter pink, is not anywhere near Chianti. But it takes its name from it, which is quite unusual. It's really because it's an expansion area, but fascinating nonetheless. So really, it should be called something else, really. I'll put that out there. I'll throw that out there to you. It's uh, it's quite fascinating. Um, so, um, of course, it's not going to be for, they want to keep it quite authentic sounding, and it is the biggest exported red wine of, um, of, of, of Italy. What does it look like then? Well, it's an area of hills. If you've been to Tuscany, you'll know that it is a wonderful location. Some great cities in Tuscany like Pisa, Arezzo, Firenze, Siena. Uh, and a lot of these are nestled in the hills before the Apennines. Uh, and this is where we find a lot of the vineyards. So it's a land of hills, as you'll see. But most Chianti, generic Chianti DOCG that we are currently talking about, are actually at some of the lower elevations, less than 300 meters. Um, so this is lower than, say, Chianti Classico, for example. Regulations of a generic Chianti. So the blend for a generic Chianti, and I keep using the descriptor of generic just because we will have, of course, some subzones coming up very shortly. And then on the separate presentation, we have Classico. It just, for me, it sounds right to call it generic. Of course, if I was working um, in the consortio of Chianti, I certainly wouldn't say that because I'd need to promote it more positively. Uh, maybe, I don't know, the standard? It, make, it makes it sound a little bit uh, negative as well. You can come up with some ideas. Write them in the comments section. So the, uh, the blend here is typically 70 to 100% Sangiovese. And the blending varieties can be both local and international, though Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc cannot exceed 15%. Um, typically, Merlot is a very, very common international grape variety blended with Sangiovese. Um, up to 10% of white grapes are still allowed in Chianti DOCG, like Trebbiano Toscana. But to be honest, it is rarely practiced today. Remember, this is a very historical way uh, where they would utilize white grapes in the blend of reds to make the wines more approachable and softer. The minimum alcohol percentage for a generic Chianti DOCG is at 11.5%. And most of the subzones, which we're about to go through, are actually 12%. The maximum yield is 63 hectoliters per hectare for generic Chianti. 
And the style, here's another producer, Rufino. Now, this, um, we tend to have these wines uh, are fairly large of production. And we know this is the biggest exported red wine from Italy. So the high yield levels with less intensive work in the vineyard, shorter aging uh, in things like stainless steel or in old oak, contributes to a sort of a light to medium flavor intensity and also lower costs. Uh, so we'll find that Chianti is one of the most affordable wine styles from the region. Typically, they are medium alcohol. They are medium body. The wines are inexpensive to mid-priced, and they're typically acceptable to very good uh, in some instances. Uh, any Chianti that has Reserva on the label, this one doesn't, but imagine if it's a Chianti Reserva, um, the wine must be aged for two years before release, and that, of course, raises the cost of the wine. Um, so that's really your, your style. Um, typically, no oak aging is mandated. Uh, uh, so there are some subzones that do mandate oak aging, but generic Chianti doesn't mandate oak aging. So you can find, really, at the real lower end, some very just bright and juicy wines for generic Chianti. So let's talk about the subzones. Uh, we've got many. Um, there are a number of subzones, but they're really only focusing on two in your texts. Uh, so the first one is the one which actually sits way up in the northeasterly section of Toscana. And this is Chianti Ruffina. Uh, please don't get, get it confused. If you, the label before was a Ruffino, that is a brand. This is a place. Chianti Ruffina is a subzone of this dark purple area around the town of Ruffina. So this is basically to the east of Florence, of Firenze. And this is small. Uh, it is colder. Uh, and it's at about 350 meters. Uh, and that's because it's nestled in a gap of the uh, Apennines, uh, in that area in the Apennines. So there really is mountains all here, but there's a gap, and you get this cold wind coming through this area, which produces cooler conditions. Um, so quite famous for that. So higher altitudes, cooling winds, uh, quite important for the style that we find here. Here's a couple of producers. So Fresco Valde are quite important here. Selva Piana makes some very good wines in this area. Uh, the result of this higher altitude and cooling wind is that we have wines of higher acidities and more restrained character. Good bright fruit floral tones, good acidities behind these. They have brilliant ability to age. They have, they're really elegant in style, not often as dense as a Classico. Uh, but brilliant ability to age, and Selva Piana are famous uh, for that. Now, it has a number of links to the aristocracy and nobility of Florence, because it's very close to Florence, and that's why we have uh, things like Frescobaldi, the estate here, which has that aristocratical link to it. Um, but it hasn't had the same amount of focus as Chianti Classico, which sits between Florence and Siena. It hasn't had the same amount of investment as that area. So the quality levels across the board are not as significant as Classico or even Montalcino down in the southern part of Tuscany. Typically, these are um, mid-priced with a few premium examples, and they typically are good to outstanding. I do find Rufina is a really strong subzone, uh, and some Rufina can easily counter the quality of Classico, uh, which is important to talk about. Um, then we have Chianti Colli Sinesi. As you'll see, I've just identified this here for you. Uh, this is the area that sits very close to Siena. It's the largest of the, uh, the subzones, and it produces some of the most full and rounded expressions of generic Chianti. It requires a higher proportion of Sangiovese, 
uh, about 75% minimum, as you see upon the screen, uh, and it has less of the Cabernets, a maximum 10% of the Cabernets of Franc and Sauvignon. Typically, they're inexpensive to mid-priced and acceptable to very good. There's a little, uh, maybe a, just a little drop in quality of Colisinesi in comparison to Chianti Rufino, but the styles are different. It depends on what, of course, you prefer. Uh, and this means Chianti of the Hills of Siena, uh, Chianti Colisinesi. Okay, so there are two of your subzones. There are other subzones sub as well, but they are not important uh, at this moment in time for your studies. But Colli Pisane, for example, the hills of Pisa has one of those. Now, we're going to look at a video just so you can really get a feel for these areas. So here we go. It's going to be a four minute video looking at Tuscany and then at the Chianti areas we've just been talking about. This is a really cool video to give you a real, real wonderful snapshot in how beautiful Toscana is. There is Tuscany, as you can see, identified in the white line, Tuscany, Toscana. And we're going to look at some of the most important cities to begin with. And, and of course, really the most important here is Florence or Firenze. Uh, very important in terms of the Renaissance, gorgeous place, wonderful architecture here. And we're gonna have a look at a couple of very important architectural parts of Florence. And of course, the first one we look at is the Cathedral of Florence. Look how spectacular that is. And put your answers in there. Who's important in terms of the uh, the painting inside of the cathedral? Please do, do put that in the comments section. The Ponte Vecchio as well, the brilliant bridge uh, that has uh, <coughs> the, the buildings within it is quite wonderful. So that's Florence. Then south of Florence is a really lovely smaller city of Siena, always in the shadow of Florence, defeated by the Medici in the 16th century. Uh, but Siena today is fiercely proud of their heritage. You can see how small it is in comparison. We're going to have a look at uh, the, uh, the, the look of Siena, beautiful place. Again, the Piazza del Campo. There we go, uh, looking at that a little bit closer. So that's the main square that you would go and visit. Lovely winding streets here as well and also the cathedral is well well worth looking at in cn i'm not sure if we look at it here oh we do excellent there you are uh, so there's your cathedral of siena which is uh, spectacular as well and i suppose the, the last uh, main city we should look at before we move on to the the, the sub zones in chianti is pisa it's where you're likely to fly to to come to tuscany uh, it's coastal it was a maritime republic in the past uh, because of its coastal area. And of course, the most famous uh, site is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And let's have a look at that. There you are right there. And of course, if you ever visit, you have to get your picture of you holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So the last little bits we're gonna look at now are the DOCG that we're talking about, generic Chianti and those two subzones. So first of all, the large expansive area of Chianti DOCG. Uh, strange because of course it takes its name from Chianti, the Classico area where you find Chianti villages. And this is a large expansive area as you can see. Now there is an area here called the Hills of Siena, Chianti Colisinesi making fuller bodied with higher stipulation of Sangiovese, 75% remember. Uh, and these generally are some of the most fullest and roundest expressions of the um, of, of generic Chianti, but a subzone. OK, uh, and they're, they're great wines. They've got lovely density behind them. They generally are kind of uh, acceptable to very good in quality. The other subzone, which is, in fact, the first subzone we mentioned, is way off in the Apennine Gap. And this is here. You can see that gap, look, that comes through the Apennines here. And of course, you get lovely cool winds here. It's also going into the mountains more. So you've got altitude. The altitude and the cooling winds here produce colder conditions, wines of higher acidities, brighter characteristics, and they have brilliant aging capabilities in Chianta Rufina, a very small subzone. Both of those subzones, by the way, also have their own consortios. 
as well, which is another mark really of how quality, how much quality is found there. Okay, so that brings me to the end of our first video here on Chianti DOCG and its subzones for the level four. Please do join me for part two on Chianti Classico, uh, which is uh, the very important Chianti area, that historical subzone. And we've got a great video to look at the villages here as well. So please do join me for that. Now, as always, any comments? questions or concerns, please do get in touch. You can do so by commenting on this video below. Make sure you click like and subscribe. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, you can use social media at the bottom of every slide as well if you'd like to get in touch. Always great to hear um, when I'm off traveling the world, if you want to meet up in any of the respectable cities that you I may be visiting, or of course, if you do come to London, come and see me at one of my establishments, maybe for a class, a glass, or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.